We thank you for the grace. And we thank you also for wisdom. We ask you for wisdom and understanding and revelation today. Anoint each one of us to hear what the Spirit says to the church of Cape Town. What the Spirit says to the church in South Africa. And specifically what the, the Lord is saying now to the intercessors. Which also includes all the eagles and the prophets. And the watchmen. Not just in Cape Town, but right across South Africa. And everyone that will be listening to these teachings. And watching the teachings. Father, we ask you to touch every single one. That ever watches this and listens to it. I pray that you will anoint them. Anoint their eyes to see. Anoint their ears to hear. Anoint them, Lord, with the Spirit, the seven spirits of the living God. Right now, Lord, we ask you to anoint us now with the seven spirits of God. The Spirit, to say that the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. The Spirit of wisdom. I receive. The Spirit of understanding. I receive. The Spirit of counsel. I receive. The Spirit of might. I receive. The Spirit of knowledge. I receive. The Spirit of the fear of the Lord. I receive my faith. Now fill me. Now fill me. just in this building, but right over Cape Town. Come. Come over here. to the anointing that is inside of us. Every born again child of God has the anointing inside of you. You have the anointing inside of you that teaches you all things. Allow Him to teach you today. And whoever He chooses to, to, to work through, tap into the anointing that is in them. There's more chairs you can come in. Thank you, Jesus. There's more seats. Yeah, just let the people come in. Right now, tap into that anointing. Just tap into the anointing. The anointing in you. If you've been baptized by the Holy Spirit and you're speaking tongues, you're speaking tongues. It says, pray in the Holy Ghost. You strengthen your soul. You, you, you build yourself up in your most holy faith. You pray in the language of angels. It releases angels. Right now, Father, we welcome you, Father. 
We welcome you, Jesus. We welcome the hosts of heaven. We welcome the angels of God into this property, onto this property now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just take any thought that comes into your mind. Take it captive now. Right now, in Jesus' name. Any thought, any thought, right now, in the name of Jesus, that any thought that comes into your mind, any thought that comes into your mind, take it captive now. We take every thought, we're taking every thought captive in Jesus' name. Every single thought, take it captive. We thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We glorify you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We bless you now, Father. We bless you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Special Jesus, we love you. Just tell him we love you. I love you, Jesus. Welcome. Just welcome the King Jesus into this place. Welcome King Jesus. Now he's here. Welcome Jesus. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you, Lord. We welcome you, Jesus. We welcome you. We welcome you, Jesus. You are faithful. You are true. You are faithful and true. Hallelujah. 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 We bless you, Jesus. Just now. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just carry on. Don't stop. Have you ever watched the Chinese church? Have you ever seen an underground meeting? We gotta start waking up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come, press in. Hallelujah. We here. We have to connect with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Surrender. Surrender those thoughts. Every stronghold. Every stronghold that's coming against you now. It's a stronghold. Hallelujah. It's a stronghold. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just give every stronghold to the Lord. Hallelujah. Every stronghold. Hallelujah. Your family. Your church. Hallelujah. We declare victory over this meeting today in Jesus' name. I declare victory. I declare victory over every single person listening to these teachings. Victory over you in the name of Jesus. The Lord has bought you with a price and I declare victory over you in Jesus' name. And he says to you today, he says to you today, church, I love you, intercessors. I love you, my bride, eagles, prophets. He says, I love you. You are special. Hallelujah. I bought you with a price. I know you. I know your pain. I see you. And I, I know your heart. Hallelujah. And I love you. I love you. He says, I love you. He says, I love you. Hallelujah. He says, I love you. He says, I love you. He says, I love you. Hallelujah. Receive. Receive. Hallelujah. The love of Jesus. Breathe in the love of Jesus. He loves you dearly. He, he loves you dearly in your pain, in your tiredness, in your weariness, in your hopelessness. He loves you. And he says, lift up your eyes, church. Lift up your eyes. Hallelujah. Lift up your eyes. For your redemption draws near. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 
Aleluia, rabara Isia. Holy Spirit is here. Jesus is here. Aleluia, rabara marokura, rabara marokura, rabara ka. He's your brother, 
bridegroom, who is beloved. He wants us to hold you. You feel him? Hallelujah. He's here. He's here to wash you with his blood. He's here to cleanse you with his spirit. He's here now. Right now he's here. He's here to cleanse you. He's here to purify you. He's here to lift you up. He's here to, to, to glorify his father through you. Hallelujah. But he's come to heal you completely. He's come to heal you. Hallelujah. He's come to heal you. Hallelujah. He's come to heal you. Hallelujah. He's healing you. The broken hearted. Hallelujah. He's come to heal the broken hearted. He's come to heal the broken hearted. Hallelujah. He's never leave you. He says, I will never leave you. He says, I will never leave you. Some of you thought he left. He hasn't left. He hasn't left Cape Town. He's here. Hallelujah. He's here now. He's here. He's here. He's here. Flood the streets with your glory, Jesus. Flood the streets with your glory, Jesus. Flood the streets with your glory in the shopping mall, in the businesses today. Hallelujah. Like the rain that's coming in Cape Town, Lord, that we prayed so much for. We say thank you. Just say thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for the rain. Thank you for filling the dam. your precious feet. Hallelujah. How beautiful. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. And intercessors you bring good news into the heavens, into the earth. You proclaim it. You intercede in your inner chambers. You go into the mountains and proclaim it. You do prophetic actions. Every prophetic action, every word you've spoken, he has seen it and he says, I love you. Faithful ones, you have not given up. Faithful ones, you have not given up. He says you're faithful. Even then you think you're failing, he says you're faithful. But you never gave up. She never gave up. And that's what you, you want to hear, isn't it? Yes. Well done. Good and faithful servants. And some of you have limbs missing. Arms, legs. But you hear them. You hear them. And he's the one that heals the broken heart. He's the one that will give you everything that is missing. Everything that the devil has robbed from you, even if he's taken a hand, God will give you another hand. If he's taken a leg, he can give you a leg. If he's taking relationships, he's going to give you new ones. He loves you, intercessor. He loves you, prophet. He loves you, watchman. The watchmen on the wall are very precious to Jesus. And he set this event up just for you. These two days, just for you. Just for you. Because he loves you. He loves you because you lay your life down. Even when you get wounded, you carry on. Even when you get shot with arrows and backlash and backlash and backlash, you carry on. You've seen others give up. 
you've seen others die in this battle. Because the enemy took them out. And you still didn't give up. Because there's something inside of you that just keeps saying, Yes. Yes, Jesus. Even if I have to die in this battle, we say yes. Yes, for the sake of Cape Town. Yes, for the sake of this continent. Yes, for the sake of this nation, this great nation. Lord, this is not the devil's nation. It is yours. We say yes. No matter what it costs us, wherever you got to go, if it costs you your house, if it costs you your family, if it costs you relationships, and even many, it has cost you all of those. And the enemy has attacked you. Your finances has been under huge onslaught. And the Lord has seen it. And the devil has come to test you and to tempt you like he did with Job. He says, curse God and die. God doesn't love you. Look what happened. He didn't provide for you. And look at those guys down the road. They've got a new car every, every month, every second year. They've got another car, another house. They're serving the devil. But how, you serve God. How come you don't have anything? Why are you still battling? And you look, your tithing and your offerings don't work either because look at you. You're still battling. And the devil's come to accuse you. You understand the job test? The, che the test is in the hardest of circumstances when you're being tested and tempted by the devil because the Holy Spirit has led you into this tremendous, terrible wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Like he led Jesus into the, into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. God does not tempt you, but the devil does. But the Holy Spirit led you into this terrible battle. Even though he knew you were going to get shot. Even though he knew that you were going to have mistakes. You are going to make mistakes. You still carried on fighting. Bleeding. Wounded. Some of you are crawling. Some of you had to crawl into this room. But you said, I will get there. Even if it's the last thing I do. So we thank you now. You feel his love? Yes. He's got great respect for you. Because you say yes in the most difficult test of all. When everything is coming against you, your thoughts, the enemy is coming your thoughts, your family is coming against you. People say you've lost your mind. You're out of your mind. What do you think you're doing? Your children might think you're mad. Your parents might think you're mad. But he, he looks at you and he, he smiles at you and says, I see that yes. Hallelujah. Well, the Holy Spirit is saying to me that this is a day of reckoning. God is coming to, to confront the enemy and all of his plans. And in the spirit I saw just off Table Bay, it was like there was a whirlpool starting to form in the sea. And, um, and the Lord just said to me, can I surround this continent with a whirlpool? Because you know what a whirlpool is like. Once you're in its clutches, you can't get out. And I said, Lord, you can do anything. And then I saw Jesus standing here with us. <clears throat> and all across the Western Cape there was these was water standing. And the Lord said to me that those are the tears of the church. The church is drowning in its own tears. And then he reached across to the to Table Bay and he picked up this whirlpool. <laughs> and he multiplied it. And he said, This is my salt water. To mix with your salt water. <laughs> and he he released whirlpools. I know it might sound strange to you, but just Hear me out. He's able to release a whirlpool over any situation 
any circumstance, mm. any issue, <clears throat> any enemy, no matter how small or how big. Yes. And as I stood there talking to the Lord, He was saying to me, "Give me that." And as I as I handed things across to Him, this world will just formed around that thing. Father, the lack of finance. And I saw this whirlpool. Just suck it away. Sure. Yes. And so, for you in the, in the intimate depth of your heart and your life and your understanding, your relationship with Jesus, He's releasing whirlpools. Because this is the day of reckoning. And as much as it is true for you as an individual, it is true for your family, <laughs> it is true for your community, it is true for the Western Cape, Cape Town, and eventually it will be true for the continent of Africa. Today is the day of reckoning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you believe? Yes. The tears of the saints He stored up in his heart in countless bottles. Every tear that you had, he sees them. Yeah. And you know what Jesus does? He weeps with you. Yeah. I know that. I know that he weeps with you. Because he says, I weep. He says, We must weep with those who Weep. Yes. If he says we must weep with those who weep, do you not think the Lord weeps with you when you're on your knees and your face, when you're in your car weeping and say, Lord, I can't take it. I can't take it anymore. I don't know what to do. Yeah. Look what is happening to the city. Yeah. Look at all the murders in Table View. I can't take it. Yeah. Look at all the murders across Cape Town. Look at the abductions and the human trafficking and these little children that are getting stolen. Yeah. Unacceptable. And he weeps and he appreciates your weeping. Yeah. Because it's only when you can go into the weeping room yes. and spend some time with him and weep with him. And it's a lonely place. Will he give you the access to the strategy room. Yeah. And the strategy room is the room where you get strategies for cities and nations for this end time harvest. Because God loves those children. God loves the parents. And He even loves those that are abducting them. Yeah, yeah. And using them and abusing them and destroying their lives. And He weeps. Heart failure is what the enemy is trying to give you. Heart failure. Because of the darkness that surrounds you. Not just your own life, not just your own life, but the lives of those that are around you that have been destroyed day in and day out. And you just look and then God forbid you ever look at Facebook for too long. And you look at this rubbish coming in front of your eyes. And he says, look up for your redemption draws near Captain. Yes. Take your eyes off Facebook. Yes. Take your eyes off the newspapers. Amen. And whatever news media you're watching and the WhatsApps that people sending you, and they always it's almost like their glory yeah. to be the first one to give you the worst news yeah. and the worst video. Yes. That's true. What yeah. is that? Yeah. Lust. Yeah. To share demonic yeah. videos. Mm. In believers? And then never mind the fake yeah. prayer requests from Angus Bucket who never wrote them. Mm. Over and over and I don't know. Our job is to preach the good news. Yes. Isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What does I-61 say? What's it say? What's I-61 verse 1? What does it say? No, it's verse 60. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because He's anointed me 
to preach. Proclaim. Preach. What? Good news. What? Good news. What is the good news? Jesus. The kingdom of God. Yeah. Go to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Go to the book of Luke. That's the good news. He says, proclaim it, preach it. <laughs> he never said you are the journalists for the kingdom. Unless you are, then that's fine. There are not many journalists for the kingdom. The journalists for the kingdom, they've got another mandate. <coughs> but we are not the journalists for the kingdom of darkness. We're the journalists for the, from heaven. We are the ambassadors of heaven. We come to proclaim good news, to set at liberty the cactus. Yes. Not to spread the deception and the lies and the threats yes. from political parties that are trying to intimidate you yes. through witchcraft. Yes. Please, do not spread the bad news. Yes. Spread the good news. Yes. And I'm not talking about warnings. If the Lord gives you a warning, He's told us many warnings of judgments and things like that. That is another story. That's not bad news, by the way. A judgment is not bad news. It's good news. It's all good news. Amen. Does God have a bad side to Him? No. no. In the Old Testament, was He a bad God? No. Did He turn over a new leaf? No. In the New Testament, He had a change of mind. Now He's the God of grace. Suddenly He became graceful. Old Testament, He's bad. I don't know, some people think God had a change between the Testaments. <laughs> it's just the contract that changed. God says, I'm the law. I change it not. That means I don't change. He never needed to change. We got to change. The law changed. And we got a covenant of grace. Hallelujah. But God is the same. Yesterday. Today. And forever. You got it? God never changed. God is God being judging Sodom and Gomorrah. Did he do that? Or was it the devil? Who judged Sodom and Gomorrah? God. Who? God. God. The same God we serve. Okay. Yes. And, uh, in the, and then we go to the book of Revelation. Who said he's going to kill Jezebel? And that, by the way, Jezebel wasn't the spirit he was talking to. He was talking about a woman. <laughs> Who is going to kill her? And put her children in a sick bed. Who was talking to her? God. Jesus. Yeah. Loving, kind, gentle Jesus. Yes. Who's going to kill a woman? Who's preaching, telling people it's okay to lurk, she has sexual immorality in the church. Yes. Yeah. Same Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. So this false gospel that's been preaching, that been preached all over the place, that you don't have to repent for your sins, is a lie from the pit of hell. Yes. yes. You understand? Yes. So let's preach the good news. Yes. And if you've got to go to Sodom and Gomorrah and say repent, yes. and you've got to do like Jonah did, mm. what did Jonah do? Jonah ran away. <laughs> he was quite an interesting dude. He didn't want to tell them to repent because he knew they were going to repent. <laughs> That's amazing. It's not, it's normally you don't want to tell them because you know they're not going to just knock you. I mean, have you ever had that problem? Yes. You don't want to tell someone to repent because you know they're going to repent. Yes. Did you ever have that problem? And you wanted God to kill them. <laughs> oh, some people are saying yes. Okay. <laughs> well, you've got a way, a way to go then. Okay. So, but Jonah didn't want that. He knew God. He knew. I said, no, nah, I'm not going there. I know what you're going to do. You, you're going to actually forgive these people. And they must die. So I'm, no, so I'm going to run away. You just kill them. And God sent a whale. Mm. Or a big fish. So, it's a whale, so let's not go there now. Maybe he was at Emmanus by that time. <laughs> so he sends a whale. He sends a big fish to swallow him. Did, did, you know, did Jonah do all of that willingly? Get swallowed by a, a, a fish? Was that like, I surrender all. <laughs> Ocean baskets. I and Jay. I'm Jesus. Okay, so he was doing a bit of deep sea fishing and he gets in the belly of the whale. Have you ever heard, yeah, you can, you can be seated. Have you ever heard people say, have you ever heard people say um, that the Holy Spirit uh, is a real gentleman? Oh, don't go there. Ah, uh, no, we've got to go there. Okay, because we're going to have some fun. We, we're getting ready for revival. And for those people who think that the Holy Spirit is a gentleman, an English gentleman, sorry, 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 an English gentleman. Sorry, I was saying the Holy Spirit is not a gentle, an English gentleman. And you say he is, I say give me the scripture. Please show me the scripture that says the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. Alright? 
There we go. <laughs> no, I was going to be more gentle than that. I was going to, I was going to say, ask Jonah if God is an English gentleman, like whale and all. He had a whale of a tongue. A big fish swallowed him. He got vomited out. He went against his will, and eventually he humbled himself, repented inside the belly of a whale, and then he, and then he repented. Uh, 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 and, he, and he preached, and the whole city was saved. And then Ananias and Sapphira, also a good example of uh, not an English gentleman when they were struck down in the church for lying. Pretenders will get killed in revival. <laughs> Pretenders, fake news, fake will be destroyed in the revival, lying to the Holy Spirit gets you killed in the Holy of Holies. You can get away with it and out of court. The reason we're not seeing people die like that in church is because the glory has not, is not in the church anymore. And now you can say, yeah, technically I have the glory in me. I say, fantastic. Can anyone else see it? <laughs> yes, you have the glory in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. All right, so we have a problem here. The problem is this thick not skin, yeah, the thick skin. It's the thick skin. It's actually the flesh. That is stopping the glory from coming out of you and me. So that be people can see the glory in us. And they walk up to you and say, I want what you got. More glory than Moses had on his head when he was shining like a light bulb, walking down from the mountain. So the Holy Spirit can be gentle. And he can be quite rough. I know people that actually jump up and down. Not, it's, got, it's not even in there. It's not. It so happens so fast. They start shaking that they have no decision to stop it. Now the Bible says the, the spirit of a prophet subject to the prophet. So that's talking about prophecy. Not shaking. <laughs> Seriously. So, you know, I, I know I'm going to mess with some of your doctrine now because I'm going to give you the doctrine you didn't think about. <laughs> seriously some scriptures you don't think about like Ananias and Sapphira were in the New Testament getting killed by God New Testament Jezebel judgment Jesus says if you don't stop this nonsense I kill, I'm going to kill you and your family what? Jesus gentle Jesus yes our loving Jesus does he love us yes is he looking to kill everyone no but he wants a clean church and he says he's going to take the church back he's going to take it back so it's going to get rough. Very rough. Why is it going to get rough? Because he's going to allow the four winds of the earth to come against the church. You want to know about that prophecy? Go and read War and Glory by Rick Joyner. I saw that in the 80s. It's going to be very rough. God loves us so much. He's not going to leave us the way we are. Because the church has become, it's gone into Babylon. He's told us for years, come out of Babylon. What does that mean? Come out of confusion by mixing. we mixing the word with other stuff. And then we're whoring with the world and, and friendship with the world is, a, is adultery. So the Lord's coming to clean up. Starting with us. Starting with me. He's come to clear and He will make us holy. Holy Spirit's first name is holy. And we cannot become holy by becoming religious. And keeping 7,000 laws. Please don't go that route. Great deception. Trying to become holy by keeping the law. Moses himself couldn't become holy. But we could become holy by allowing the Holy Spirit to transform us as we behold His glory. From glory to glory as we behold the glory. So holiness comes through observation. Did you ever hear that? Holiness comes through observation. When you observe Jesus and you watch him, you get a suntan. You understand? I know you don't see much sun lately, but sun, S-O-N, tan. Okay? Suntan. In other words, he says, look up. And the glory starts coming on you and you start getting transformed from the glory in him will transform you 
You know why it's the hardest thing in, in your life to look at Jesus constantly? Why do you think it's so hard that? We all know that's the right thing to do. Look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. You know that, right? You know that you, go, you should be looking at Jesus. Like when you're driving a car, look at the road. If you don't look at the road, you're going to have accidents. In life, if you look at Jesus, you're going to have less accidents. In fact, no accidents. But I've yet to find someone that can do that cont continuously. No one has ever looked at Jesus continually, forever. No one. So just relax now so you can forgive yourself. <sighs> but if you can look, for, look at him, you will be changed into his glory, not your story or glory, gory story, but his glory story. And his story is glory for you. So you look at him. Can you just close your eyes and look at him? You, look, you can see better with your eyes closed, by the way. Seriously, close your eyes and uh, tilt your head upwards. It's a prophetic action. That's why it's good to stand. You're doing a prophetic action. Now I don't need to stand. Now you stand. Look at him. Look at him now and say, Jesus, show me your face. <laughs> Show me your face, Lord. 